So today we're going to demonstrate how to use bottom-up dynamic programming to solve coin change problem. If you want to know how to solve a problem with top-down dynamic programming or memoization, check out our other video that we made exactly that with the climbing stairs problem. So you can pause the video and read the question to yourself. Here, for example, we have coins and the amount. Our job is to figure out the minimum number of coins it would take to break the amount 11. To demonstrate the coin change example, we have an example here where we have an array of coins where we have 2 cents, 3 cents, and 5 cents. And we want to make change for 7 cents. To demonstrate this, we have made a graph of the, all the possibilities that you can take to make to reach 0 from 7. So to understand the problem, we chose all the left subtrees are what happens when you try to make change of 2 coins. The middle is for 3, three cents and the right for five cents. Without walking through the whole problem, we can see that the path that gives us the least amount of coins used is over here where we use two cents and then we use five cents to make change for seven. And over here where we take five cents and two cents. Before we move on, I do want to point out that there are actually repeats of calculations, for example, at the twos. And we'll be using DP to solve this problem. So, let's get started. To solve a bottom-up dynamic programming question, just like the name suggests, we start from the bottom of the equation. We see in our graph earlier, we had all the possible paths that we can perfectly give change to. So instead of what we did in the top-down approach, we're going to start from the bottom. So that would be our base case. What's the minimum number of change that would give us zero change? Well, that would be zero coins. To build up to our answer, we were going to slowly build from solving zero change all the way to our, our amount, which is seven. So to demonstrate the next step, we're, our goal is to solve for amount at one. So how many coins can we make to solve amount one? Well, let's go through a quick example here. We made this little table right here, and our goal is to find what's the minimum number of coins to give us change one. Looking at that graph, we would brute force and try all three of our existing options. Two, what happens if we give two coins, three coins, and five coins? Two coins would give us negative one, and that would be a invalid option, give us n nothing. Three coins would give us negative two, which is also invalid, we wouldn't get perfect change. And trying to take five coins would it also give us negative four, which would also give us no change. Before I let Scott take it away, there's some there is a specific equation that I want to show you now that we demonstrate this back up here. To find the minimum amount of coins used, we need to find the minimum amount used for our amount minus our two coin, our amount minus our three coin, and our amount minus our five coin, plus one to count to include the coin that we used. Uh, before we get started, let me go ahead and fill in the answer of one in our cache real quick. So as Josh demonstrated, we don't have any answer for one, so I'm gonna go ahead and cross it out real quick. So at the amount two, we're gonna try coin two, coin three, and coin four. So if you look at coin two, if we take our amount minus coin two, that's gonna put us at coin zero. Uh, three, gonna be out of range. Five, gonna be out of range. So let's focus on this one first. Over here, we know that we only use zero coin to make up the amount of zero. So we're gonna use coin one, which is ourself, plus zero. So this does give us the answer of one. Coin three and coin five, since they are out of range, so we don't have to fill them in based on recurrence relation as Josh mentioned above. So we cross it out and cross it out. So therefore, our answer is gonna be one. So let me kinda of clean up our board a little bit and fill in our answer as one. So if we want to solve coin three, we're going to try all of our changes. So negative two, negative three, and negative five, as Josh drew for us. So at negative two, that's going to give us the um, using the cache of one, and that has no answer. So we're going to go ahead and skip that. So when we try negative three, that's going to give us the amount of zero. So that has an answer. So we're going to take one plus zero. And at five, it's going to be out of range. So there is no answer for that one, so we cross it out as well. So as you can see, the best answer for three is one coin. Okay, so now let's look at four. Okay, 
So at 4, we're going to be looking at negative 2, negative 3, negative 5. So at negative 2, that's going to give us 2, and that has the best answer of 1. So we're going to take 1 plus 1. So at negative 3, it's, there's no answer, so cross it out. Negative 5, out of range, there's no answer, cross it out as well. So the best answer here is 2. Now let's look at 5. Once again, if you look at 5, our negative 2 is going to give us the answer of 1. Put that in, negative 3, that's also give us the best answer of 1 as well. So we're going to take 1, which is our coin, plus the best answer of 1. And negative 5, that's going to give us a look up in a cash table of index 0. So that's going to give us 0 coins, so we're going to take 1 plus 0. So the best answer here is this one, is 1. So we're going to go ahead and fill in this table right here. Let's look at the amount 6. Last one, at the amount 7, we repeat the same pattern again. At negative 2, that's going to give us the best answer of 1. At negative 3, that's going to give us the best answer of 2. So 1 plus 2 here. At negative 5, that's going to give us the best answer of 1. So 1 plus 1. So the best answer here is 2. So we're going to fill in 2. And that's it for a demonstration. Now before we jump to the live coding part, let's talk about the runtime and space complexity. So the runtime complexity of this problem, if we just did a brute force and just draw out every single graph like we did, let's say we will use n to represent the coin amount, and we'll use m to represent the number of coins that we have to use to make change. If we brute force everything, we would have a runtime of n to the power of m possible combinations. Luckily, because we did this the dynamic programming way, we actually only went through, we built up our solution from n numbers to, build, to, to give change to, times m, which is the number of coins that we can try, giving us a O of n times m. As for space complexity, we only have an array of amount n that we built up our problem, change zero all the way to a subproblem of change n, and we just store our values and reuse it there giving us a space complexity of O to the power of n. All right, so first we need to initialize our cache, and we need to iterate over each of the amounts starting from one. All right, so let's talk about the reason why we choose amount plus one as a default minimum. Because in our code, we want to have a simple way to just keep using math.min in order to pick out the smallest coin. And number two is we want to prevent any gerbil flow because we want to take the advantage of the fact that the smallest coin denominator has to be one. So amount plus one will never get hit. Next, we need to iterate over each of the coin and we need to make sure our remainder is not less than zero. If it is not, we're going to see if we can update our min by comparing and picking the smaller amount in our cache. And finally, before we return, we need to make sure that our answer is not equal to the amount plus one. And this is the case where there is no answer and we need to return a negative one back. Thanks for watching our video. Thumbs if you like it and sub if you love it.